Okay, I want to go through some of the early draft stage on writing um, the art and art history essay and kind of show you how it works. Um, so let's jump into it. Now I'll, I'll show you bits and pieces of the early draft stage um, and I'll go to the art and art history page. <clears throat> um, and again, just so people know and uh, kind of what I'm expecting with this, but also how the other big thing is to how not to get caught up in certain problems. So for the assignment, <clears throat> now this is the assignment right here. Um, very important is you're going to be creating what's called a formalistic interpretation of an artwork. So you want to interpret the form. Now originally you were going to have to do some research. Originally that was the project. <clears throat> For the essay though, at this point we're not going to worry about doing research on the essay itself. I do want you to complete the library assignment um, that's at the top of the page, but for the essay itself, you do not, you are not going to be required to do any quality outside research. Okay, so I want to be clear about that. Instead, what you're going to focus on is an aspect of the artwork and come up with your interpretation of the artwork. In other words, you're going to classify it <clears throat> as either being beautiful or sublime. That's the goal with this essay. Okay. Now a few things on, on what I'm going to do here. I've chosen, um, the artwork I've chosen to interpret is the Moses leaving Egypt, okay? That was an artwork that all of you worked on to a degree. You, you did a, a discussion on it. I wanted to take that one because I knew you, you, know, you wouldn't take that one for your, um, for your interpretation piece, for your essay. I'm going to do this one and walk you through essentially what you should be doing with the artwork you have. Now, one of the very first things I did was I spent some time studying the painting itself and what was going on with it. And I could see people gathered over here and people gathered back there and people gathered out here. I can see an angel right here. I thought when I originally looked at the painting that this these little guys were angels. They're not, they're the children of Moses and Zipporah. Now, what you can do, and I encourage you to do this, but don't worry about if you do it or not. Um, you can look into Wikipedia, and this is what I, this is Zipporah. This is the wife of Moses. Um, I got a little information on her, and again, most of you guys already know that Wikipedia is not considered to be a reliable source, and it's not. It's not part of quality research. Okay, so, but you can do that for this essay because I just want you guys to get through it. It's generally okay, um, but you can use um, Wikipedia in the future if you want to because it has these references down at the bottom. And these essays are often very good. Um, they do often, what I do like about Wikipedia, it, the problem is that anybody can go in and change this. Um, anybody could and make stuff up that's really goofy and silly, but they have references at the bottom they should <clears throat> that you can go to and these are oftentimes from quality sources. Um, you can see some of these sources are actually quite good. Um, some of them are just websites like the Torah.com is just basically Wikipedia for the Torah. Um, but some of them are from university presses, like Syracuse University Press. That's a major university in New York State. Um, and this is about Zion before Zionism, and this gets into how Judaism basically started off. Um, and But you know what? You don't have to go to those. So I do want you to know in the future, if you do need to do research, you can use Wikipedia as a jumping board, as a springboard to go on to other research. But understand that what is put in the Wikipedia page itself is unreliable. Some of it can be very good, but some of it can be really sketchy because anybody can change it. If you set up an account, you can become an editor of a Wikipedia page. Anybody can do this. I've, I've done it with you know various philosophical um, pieces, but anybody can do that. <clears throat> so understand the Wikipedia page itself is not reliable but you can use Wikipedia to jump to reliable sources that are here. But generally in the long term, I, I would not use it as a crutch too much. 
This does give me some understanding of what Exodus was about and things like that. That is perfectly fine to understand the painting a little bit better in itself. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's very important to keep in mind this is Perugino's interpretation of the Exodus story. This is not the Exodus story. This is his interpretation of it that is very, very, very important to keep in mind. Um, so you're not going to get Exodus here. You're going to get an interpretation of Exodus. And after going through the painting much more carefully and spending some time, I could see that, okay? That was coming out. Now, what I did when I started to write my essay is I started to break it up into pieces. I needed to break it up into four different pieces. What I decided on was to do this piece first. And what I did learn is that this pair figure right here is Moses, okay? But this figure right here is Moses. And this figure right here is Moses. So this is a succession of events. It's a narrative built within the painting. Right here at the start, then right here in the middle, then right here at the end. Those are three body paragraphs. And then what I was going to do was make my fourth body paragraph the entire painting itself, bring it all together. So that decision for how I'm going to cut it up that should be made early on in your process, right from the beginning. So I cut up this piece, and this piece, and this piece. That's how I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to do the whole painting. Those are going to be my four body paragraphs. Now I want to show you how I broke it up and how I put it together on a Word document. Okay, so let's go to that. Um, here it is right here. Now I have not entirely finished this. I'm in fact in the process of writing this essay. And you can see I don't have the first image taken out. I don't have the piece where I'm going to take um, this part and write about it. And But I do have some of the others, so let me show you those. And I'm going to cut them up right here before you, do a little bit of a, a dissection. Notice I took, I cut and pasted a piece from the painting itself. Essentially, that works as if it were a quotation, not from a text, but from a painting. That's what this is, because what we're doing is a formalist interpretation. We're going to go through the form of the painting. And then you can see I have another cutting um, from the painting, from the last uh, part of the narrative. Um, and then what I have at the end, <clears throat> um, well, I haven't even gotten it yet. I'm going to have a, the whole picture of the painting right here. Okay, So I've done two of the cut and paste from two parts of the painting already. Okay, Let me do the first one, and then I'll uh, go away and, and come back. I'm going to write for a little bit, but I want you to see how I'm going to do this piece by piece. And so what I've done is I've cut this piece out in the second body paragraph and this one in the third, and you can see that in the what I've done so far. I need to get this one, and then I need the whole painting itself. Okay. So let's do this. Let me cut it, um, the, piece, the piece of the painting out. I want this part of the painting. I don't want Moses' head. I want to get um, the figures in the back of the painting um, <clears throat> all taken out. Okay. I want to interpret that part. Um, but I'd also like to get some of this up here. Um, <clears throat> because that really sets it for me as a pastoral picture. Now I've gotten some of this stuff, but you can see what I have is this part of it. Now what I'm going to do, you're not gonna see this because I'm gonna go out of the screen, out of your area. I'm in the preview is what I've done. I've, I'm in what's called the preview for the photograph. I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna to go to the edit function in cut. And it's going to convert it for me. So then it cuts the piece of the painting out. And then I take it over here and I'm going to do control, uh, Command V or Control V. And that pasted that part of the picture. Now it did get this little bit that I didn't really want, but that's okay. I got this part and I got this part. That's what I want to discuss. And I got the rocks in the background. I don't know what to do with those yet, but I've got them. Um, so I've got the uh, painting essentially cut and pasted into this um, <clears throat> piece. And I'm going to have to get one more piece. I'm going to have to get the whole painting here at the end. But I'm going to stop the video right now. 
and start writing on it and get going on it. And then I'll come back for the next part of the, I'll come back with a second video. So that's how you get your uh, painting started, your essay started. Pick your painting and then cut it up into pieces and then get it. And that's your uh, quotations, essentially, that you're going to work with. Okay. All right. I'll be back with the second video. Take care, you guys.